if I'm at the top of my swing, and all things being equal, I'm recentering. So when my lead arm is parallel into this position, my upper body is over here. I can feel considerable pressure down into that lead foot, right? So if I was to then back up out of that and tilt my upper body away, well, now I'm starting to load too far up on the back foot, which as you said, it feels like a lot of the time you're hanging back. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a live lesson with Dan. Dan himself is a PGA coach, and this was shot when I was over in Florida recently doing some collaboration videos. And Dan reached out to me and he wanted to get a little bit more power out of his ball striking and get him a better understanding of exactly where his inconsistencies were coming from. This is a great lesson. Dan himself is a very high level golfer and it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience working through this process with him to get the most out of his game. So I hope you enjoy this lesson. We've got two parts to this, the analysis and then the fix in the second video. Enjoy. That's my typical shot. That was probably a, about an eight, but just a little held off. A little, say a seven, eight yard push. Seven, eight yard push. Yeah. See, that's my typical shot. That was like that shot I showed you that video I, I had from a couple days ago. You know, looks okay, but it's just not what I wanted. Yeah, okay. So ideally, you want that sort of drop draw ball flight? I do. Right? I mean, I don't have to have a, you know, but I, I just don't want the feeling that I'm doing dragging that. Yeah. And it's like again, let's say, Karen, I'm hitting this shot, and there's, let's say, that flag is my target, and oh, out of bounds is that sand. Yeah. I want to feel like I can challenge the hole as mm -hmm. opposed to what would I do? Mm -hmm. I would set up left, and I would hit it probably 10 yards left of that pole and it would start to just fade, which is okay. Mm. But my drive would go 240. Yeah. Cause I'm fading it. Yeah. If I could challenge it with a draw, I know I could get 10, 12 more yards. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but I revert back to that fade yeah. cause I know that's what I can do. That's, that's what you can my do. bread and butter. So I can, I have a bread and butter shot that I can play mm -hmm. that I'm confident with. Hmm. So I drive the ball pretty straight, mm -hmm. but I'm limited, you know, I'm, I'm limited on how, you know, I'm, I'm probably one of the shorter guys in my group. We can change that way. You know, yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm not expecting miracles, but <laughs> you'll be surprised. So, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to hit a fade first and then a draw second with the objective to drop online with the target. Okay, okay. so you can set up however fade you like. First. Fade first, draw second. It looks comfortable though. That would, be, that would be what I would, if you said, Dan, mm. million dollars close to the hole, one shot. Yeah, that's, that's what you'd what do. I would play. But if, you know, so I'm not, I know how to play golf, but mm. if I said, boy, you know what? If I could draw that ball and hit a higher, softer draw yeah. when I need it, you know, I'm not going to. I know what I should do when I, when the heat's on me, right? Yeah. But if there's a back left pin, there's a back left pin, and you're one up on me going the last hole, and the only way I can get close is to hit that draw in there. You know, you're 20 feet. You're going to make it worse par. I yeah. need to birdie it. I don't want to have to fade a ball to a left pin to try to get To close. always get into that, yeah. It's not going to... It's just, you know, I'm kind of, now, can I do that? I can, but it, it takes a lot of work and, and manipulation yeah. in my mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and then when, when you feel like your timing's not on, it just feels unnecessarily challenging yeah. to execute it. 
So our 18th hole is over here and it's a dog leg left and I'm playing yesterday. It's 430. Yeah. 430 yards and it's a south. It's a wind very similar to this. Mm -hmm. Left to right off the tee and left to right into the green. So I hit this little spinny, you know, down the middle, but spinny drive. Yeah. I have 228 to the flag and I hit my three wood 20 feet from the hole. Yeah. Great shots, but my buddies are 190, yeah. 200, 185. So really in the pursuit of more distance from your perspective, you feel like being able to get a draw is going to be a product of getting a, a more proficient delivery, a better exactly. release. Yeah. Right. I don't want to feel like, oh, geez, I'm on the last hole. It's left to right against wind. And I'm assuming based on your, your divot pattern and what you've talked about today, you do have rounds when you're not on where you thin nearly every shot, right? Uh, like low on the face? A little low on the face. Yeah. A little low on the face. And weak ball flight? Yeah. 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 yeah not like, geez, 156 on front of the green? Yeah. 27? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. That's, what would you like? What distance would you be happy hitting? Say, you know, low 160s. Okay. I okay. That's realistic. Yeah. 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 You know, Absolutely. I got graphite shafts. I got, you know, these clubs are six years old, but yeah. I think, I think 160, 162 is reasonable. Okay. Okay. Reasonable. Great. Yeah. So let's hit one more for me. Okay. So this is a draw, right? Mm -hmm. And so what did you attempt to do to hit that draw? So Carrot, I, I kind of like that one. That was a, that was a 9.5 for me. Yep. So I closed my stance shoulders, felt a little bit more shallow mm -hmm. and tried to release it. Yeah. Okay. I want to see you do instead that. Of, instead of holding it. So I, I tried to release it, you know, release my right side better. Yeah. Cover it better. Okay. So I just release my right side better. So I want you to hit a big hook, Okay. right? I want you to, with the intent of finishing on your target line again, mm -hmm. I want you to, as much as possible, go as far right of this close pin, uh -huh. start it out, yeah, and then hook it right back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing here, Dan, is I'm just getting a good idea of how you yourself would go about in yeah. the shop shaping oh, process. Absolutely, yeah. So it doesn't matter high or lowish, right? Nope. Just I just want to see that thing curve. Yeah. So when you need to purposely hook one a lot, is that a challenge for you? Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. so. I mean, that was a pretty good shot, but that's, I'm not going to curve it a whole lot more than that. More than that. You know, I've, I've seen, again, I'm not comparing myself to Tiger Woods, but a Tiger Woods. He's a good model. <laughs> yeah, well, he could start it at the guy in the blue and hit it, you know, no, I'm not Tiger Woods, I'm not trying to, but I'm saying I could do a little better. You could do a little better. Yeah. <laughs> So if you could get a couple of things out of today's session, right? Yeah. I know you've detailed kind of distance, getting a better understanding of the impact there. Is there anything else that you would like to achieve in today's session? From your perspective, like a better understanding of maybe where the body should be or the club should be or yeah. why you hit oh. X shot. Yeah, oh. okay. Yeah, all the above. Yeah, so like say, hey, Dan, your body's in the wrong position. Hey, your club's out in the wrong position. You're, you're, too, you're too close at the top. You're... You're uh, too steep on the, you know, you're too narrow, you're too wide, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so. I just, you know, I, I just don't want you to feel like, you know, in a, in a in one session, you got to, you know, rebuild the, you know, like, so give me 22 things. No, 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 not at all. I, I, I think miracles, you know, I just the power of what we're going to do. So if you, if you just jump over, I'll just okay, use yeah, my shadow yeah, here. Yeah. The power of what yeah. we're going to do here is we're going to give you just a really good understanding relative to your contact at the moment compared to, let's say, someone that has a really proficient low point control mm -hmm. release and power. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't struggle 
to hit that draw. They can, on command if they want mm -hmm. to, hit a bit of a fader of draw, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll record, I'm gonna do a recording for the face on here, in which we'll mm -hmm. talk about sort of the differences and what you're doing within your swing. And then we'll do the same thing from a down the line perspective as well, okay? When we're looking at controlling the low point a little bit better, so let's say that at the moment- I Jared, I think my low point is way too far forward. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. So yeah. A, a lot of that is relatively um, applicable to the movement and the sequence of how the body, the arms and the club mm -hmm. works. And also it's not only necessarily low point, but also the height of that low point, right? Which is the mm -hmm. arc height. Mm -hmm. So if we just look at body positions and as a relative template, what you would want to see is from the address position, you would want to see your left ear somewhat over the golf ball, right? Mm -hmm. And a comfortable club head position between the inside of the lead heel and the ball mm -hmm. position, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have a look at kind of where you are at the moment, I would say that your ball position is pretty good, right? Uh, and then we do the same thing with the line being drawn up. We can see straight in space how far back your head is off that reference line already, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So what that does, if we're talking about uh, reverse engineering this and we go, okay, so what does this move then encourage throughout the swing? Mm -hmm. Because if we can put so many or as such elements in our setup and our backswing to encourage that more proficient strike and that compression, well then that's easy than trying to manipulate it throughout the swing. Mm -hmm. So for example, Absolutely. instead yeah. of trying to drag it, yeah and release it, mm -hmm. if we can get you set up in such a way that will produce more of that predictable low point mm -hmm. with the compression, well, that's obviously ideal. So we can see that your head is set uh, a fair way back at address, right? Mm -hmm. So then as you make your move to the top of the swing, we get a lot of what's called flexion of the upper body. So if we do the same thing over here on the right-hand side and we stop at the top, what are some big differences you see there, Dan? Yeah, so my, my upper body's moved to the right, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe my shoulders, as a result, have turned slightly flattish. Mm -hmm. I'd say the biggest thing is my upper is not over my lower. My upper's way behind it. You know, I'm, I'm, I've moved off the ball. Yeah, you know? yeah, quite considerably. And we do see that a big so effect. That on the... So that's rubber rock. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it is just a very good template of oh, yeah. no, someone's with him. Yeah, great ball striking, right? So mm -hmm. um, now from that position there, if you were to have a driver in your hand, for example, I would say, yeah, you could probably get away with that. Mm -hmm. But in regards to quality ball striking with irons, the more that you shift your upper body mass off the golf mm -hmm. ball, the more challenging it is to produce that consistent low point mm -hmm. going forward, yeah. right? Yeah, I totally agree, yeah. So then as you shift forward, let's say down into this position here, when the lead arm is then parallel, you can see how far back in space you still are. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking about creating speed and pressure, right? So pressure into the ground and then how much force that you can create. If you were to make a golf swing, let's say you were on a diving board and you jumped off the, the diving board and you tried to make a golf swing, you couldn't because we need to use the ground to create the most amount of force. Mm -hmm. If you were applying this to any other sport, right? If you're looking for an explosive move, be it shooting a basketball, hitting a baseball, throwing, you actually need to leverage the ground in how much you push down to push off. And that whipping in those other sports or the moment of impact is the same as what we would see at the moment of impact with the golf club, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So question. Yeah. what happens is the more that our upper body mass is behind the golf ball, the less pressure we're actually putting down into this lead foot. So for example, if I'm at the top of my swing and all things being equal, I'm recentering. So when my lead arm is parallel into this position, my upper body is over here. I can feel considerable pressure down into that lead foot, right? So if I was to then back up out of that and tilt my upper body away, well, now I'm starting to load too far up on the back foot, which as you said, it feels like a lot of the time you're hanging back. Now, you're a very proficient golfer and you get it done and your way of doing so is to then drag the handle, right? Because if you didn't and you tried to get that active release or you casted it, guess what's gonna happen? Yeah. You'll hit a mile behind exactly. the ball. Yeah, sure. So what's happened, what's happened over a period of time is that as the golf club has then been trying to work more in front of the body, and then we get down into club sharp parallel, you can see how his body is just so much over on top mm -hmm. of the ball and how much yours is behind. Mm -hmm. Now, through this impact zone, you'll see yourself have to drag that handle through a lot. And you can see once again, moving through the ball, 
you get this look that you lose a lot of the structure of your arms very early on, okay? So your lead arm tends to have, let's call it like a mini chicken wing action, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is a loss of power rather than this straight line extension mm -hmm. through the golf ball. Absolutely, yeah. And if we draw this line that extends up from the inside of the front foot, you can see how much you are hanging back through the golf mm -hmm. ball, like straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. That gives you this look that your body is staying back through space, mm -hmm. right? And then all things being equal, if you think about the direction of your swing and the influence that this would have, if I'm hitting in this direction here, the more back my body is, the more left my path is going to be through the moment of impact. The more I am on top of it, not only is that gonna encourage more force down into the ground, which will allow me to create more speed, but the golf club will come more from the inside, giving me a greater chance of hitting that draw. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So one of the big keys that we can actually encourage straight off the bat with you is to change your stance a little bit. For me, your stance is too wide there, mm -hmm. right? The wider your stance is, with the straighter your toes, the harder it is to actually turn sufficiently, but also shift your pressure sufficiently, mm -hmm. right? So if I stand super wide, I can't really turn and I actually can't move between my feet and I'm more likely to hang back through the ball. So what I want to see with you is we want to narrow these feet up a bit, right? I want to get this about 15 degrees and for you even more so, I want this probably another 15 degrees flat open than what it is. If you narrow your heels up, what that's going to allow, an easier way to pivot in a centered fashion, but then the benefits of having this in such a flared state is it makes it easier to then shift your pressure over. Because if you have a look at what your left knee does in transition, and we'll get to those. Mm -hmm. So you see how his left knee moves out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what happens is that left knee moves out over the lead foot. See how yours stays in for a long time? So your kneecap is staying inside. So if we were to draw a line that extends up from, let's call the center of the ankle here, through this point here, you'll see how your knee stays on the inside of that line for a long time. And what you'll see from here is, is he might be on the inside of the top of the swing, but with his lead foot flared out as he shifts his pressure, you can see how it moves outwards. Mm -hmm. And having those toes flared out and that kneecap moving towards encourages the whole body to then extend towards the target and follow through. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? No, no. Great. Um, I know why I do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why do I do this? Because I'm trying to get that height, right? So, yeah. you know, so... Um, everything I'm doing is in, like, I have my, in my mind, is, am I A reason accurate? why you're doing it, am yeah. I, am I accurate when I say that my low point is too far forward? Or do you if, if you were an amateur golfer, right, your low point here would be way too far back based on your body position, but because you are dragging the handle yes. so far in front, right. yeah. you make it forward. Yes. But right. if you are not spending time hitting golf balls, and then you get to the range and you're feeling a bit um, rusty as such. You haven't yeah. warmed up. Yeah. It's tough work. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, this injury that you've got here, mm -hmm. when you're trying to drag this oh, thing yeah. and this elbow stays that internal and then it's got to do that, oh, I, that's, I, I, I would say it's got a lot to do with it. I do. I do. I, I really do. I really feel you're right. I mean, that's, you know, it's because I, it came from golf. It absolutely, it came from golf, to be honest with you, hitting balls off mats. Yeah. You know. Not turf. When we go through this process over here on the left-hand side, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what you see with this motion from the top of the swing coming down. Mm -hmm. So to hit a draw. Let's just say so, if, if, yeah. if this was your stock swing yeah. and you saw that motion from the top and then coming down in transition, what would you see there? I'd say it looks like a pretty good swing for a nice fade. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a good, good looking swing if you want to fade it. This is how you fade the ball 10 yards. Correct. Now, from a 2D perspective, uh, from standing face on, uh, from behind, that would be correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but what happens is when you get too far back behind it even more, well, the swing direction just gets way too far left. So you start coming way across it, right? Yeah. So if we just kind of look at mm -hmm. where that shaft plane would be working through the golf ball, you can see it's coming slightly steep down and across and then exiting quite far left, right? Mm -hmm. So a good, a good um, recipe for a fade. Yeah, right? correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now for what you want to do, 
if you wanted to create like a powerful fade, you would have to be a lot more on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, with what we just did then, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna work on creating a little bit more of this sort of extension because you are creating like a nice amount of depth at the top of the swing. Mm -hmm. So do you use this as a reference in your teaching, like the end of the handle getting far enough I behind your ankle? a little bit, but not, not as a, I don't do a lot of that. I have, but. So really what we would be looking for is to try and get your butt of handle as deep close to that ankle as possible. Mm -hmm. So you can see you're slightly a little bit more out on top of mm -hmm. it. But with these little changes of narrowing up the stance, right, with a little bit more foot flare, that will happen naturally. Mm -hmm. Because what's going to happen as we make these little changes that I'm going to give you is your shaft will naturally start to shallow out a little bit mm -hmm. more without actually just trying to manipulate the sake mm -hmm. of the shaft. Okay? Yeah. So for you, a lot of what we're going to be talking about is not necessarily from the down the line perspective. It's a lot more about face on. Okay. And we're going to talk a lot about kind of extension of the spine and how that gives you power. Okay. Do you think my hands go out too much on the takeaway? In the takeaway? I would say, see, there's certain elements to what you do in your swing that I'm sure you've been doing for a long time, mm -hmm. and you could pick apart the swing forever yeah. in a day, yeah, exactly. and we yeah. could change all these. Yeah. Yeah. But what I want to do is I want to give you a, a, a new setup strategy mm -hmm. and a better understanding of what's going to give you that speed that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at how good your ball striking gets mm -hmm. without worrying too much about the minutiae of this. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah.